Hi, my name is Jean. Welcome to Jonas Workshop. Today we'll be looking to what you're going to need to build that lap counter. You will require the development board such as an Arduino. I, I use a Uno, but you can use a Nano. You will need some resistors. So these are 270 ohms, but you can use 220. 10K resistors. If you want to do a mechanical debounce, you're going to need some electrolytic capacitors. So I'm using 10 microfarads. I'm using this because that's what I had laying around. You will need some momentary switches so you can use the menu. And also, if you have a few spares, you can use to test without using any optocoupler. You will need some jump wires, a breadboard, and the example is to work on a 20 by 4 LCD. But bear in mind, the LCD needs to be mounted with a module, with a I2C module. To make it easier for you, you might as well make something similar to this. So of course you get the LCD, the UNO, and the breadboard. By no means, this is what we're going to be using. Okay, this is just to show you an easy way to set up development boards. I will demonstrate how it works by showing this board I made to be a complete standalone thing and it will run directly from the current provided by the track. Straight away you can see that I'm missing an optocoupler here that's because I only have three but you know in the future I'll be adding another one. I didn't put any capacitor here to debug, but you can do that if you want. This is just to operate the menu. I'm going to be running out of a power supply. At the moment it's at 10 volts, but you can run from 7 to 15, I believe. So let's first set up the number of laps. And if you hold it, it increments and it should stop at one lap, the minimum. It won't go beyond that, up to a thousand, but you can change that value you know, yourself if you want to do more than a thousand laps. Yeah. So this is enter and you get a gantry. And we're clear with a random number. To restart the race when you're not finished, you can just press the reset button. And it clears from the top. But let's say you you finish the race normally. See, you stop at two laps, and you can press any button, and you bring him back to the menu. So now, what if you want to? put everything on the breadboard. If you have a nano or you know, it's going to be about the same. So here I'm going to be showing with a nano mounted directly on the breadboard. So basically this is the breadboard. That's the LCD. You see through the top and this module is behind it basically. And the SCL wire goes to A5. SDA to A4, that's very common on I2C connections. We're going to bring the positive and the negative to the module as well. These pair of wires are what normally goes to the track. As I previously demonstrated, you can just use a, a positive and a negative wire and you feed it, you know, the positive here, the negative there, obviously. So that's pin one, two. The number three is not in use, 
or the sixth, and then you have the fourth and the fifth that I use. And all these resistors here are 10k, and these ones are around 220, 270. But I only use these because that's what I had in hand. And the same goes for the electrolytic capacitors. It's to smooth the signal so it debounces the mechanical switch. If you use a NAND instead of a UNO, you notice that it's got more IOs than a UNO. The only reason why I use the digital IO 2, 3, and 12 is because of my development board. And I free some space in case I wanted to use a relay board. And the pins I use are similar to a race coordinator. But you're welcome to, to play around. I'm sure you can use these switches on the analog inputs. This is no longer an input pull up. You have to use a resistor here. The pull up, if you remember, works the other way around. On the sketch, it works on low instead of high. So if you're using this, you have to put on high. And, and use normal input, which I'll be showing in a sketch in a minute. So this is our code, which is already available on GitHub. And you can already see some of the changes here where I changed the pins. So I can use my lap counter I have already installed on a track. But you're welcome to use any other pin. Just remember to declare it here. This is the place where you declare the buttons. And of course, if you're changing the inputs for the buttons, you have to change it here. And of course, here you can display your own welcome message if you wish to, or you can just delete all that. This bit here is where you change the limit of laps you want it to handle. So I put from one to a thousand. Right, so if the buttons, you ever want to leave it as a pull up, you need to put this as low. And here, input pull up. And, I, and again, if you're changing the pins above the buttons, you have to change it here too, which this represents each pin you used. If you ever want to use a relay board, this is to make the track live, and this is to cut the current. This is where you do that. And of course, because we're using optocouplers, it's going to have to go on high rather than low. And here, feel free to change it. This is to do with the gantry. If you don't want to have the, the gantry shown on the LCD, you can change it here. You can replace all of this with the LEDs. And the very last here, the delay is randomly generated between one second and five seconds. So basically when the green flag or when the gantry is turned off, it will take between one and five seconds. If you have questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Hopefully this was useful for anyone who wanted to build a standalone lap counter. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.